I'm Claire, and this is my mate Anna. Ten years ago, Anna and I drove a Ford Fiesta 10,000 kilometers from the UK to West Africa. We'd bought it off eBay for less than 250 pounds. We had no service history and almost no mechanical know-how. The West Africa we saw is a different one now, and today's politics would make this trip a challenge to repeat. Our breakdowns were outnumbered only by adventures, and we got way more mileage from our car than we'd ever hoped for. Ten years later, this is our story. In our last episode, we were camped out on the Mauritanian border. We'd just woken up with hangovers and an active minefield ahead of us to cross. To avoid illegally importing booze into Muslim Mauritania, we'd drunk the evidence and were feeling slower than usual. Waiting to get over. <coughs> right, we just crossed the border. We're in no man's oh. land. There is tons of lime mine, land mines. That's why there's a fence right there. <laughs> They've apparently cleared, what was it, six kilometers? No, there's well, six well, kilometers here to clear before the border. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So they put true. the border post back at the other spot. So, yeah, might be the last film. At some point, I took a wrong track through the minefield, got us stuck in the sand, and watched everyone else disappear in a different direction. As I was about to sprint across the open desert to flag down the cars, my hungover brain signaled, minefield. Abandoning the chase, I kept both my legs and used them to push the car instead. Still on the minefield. Yep. We, some old yeah. refrigerators. Yeah, cold beer and all, yeah. Mmm, mm. cold beer. We just got ripped off. By, Probably. Yeah, most likely. By money exchanges. We. I still went on my sled. We're tired. And we're waiting for scramble. We're gonna scramble have massive, eggs, baked beans. massive. The promise of food was keeping us focused, and as we drove the minefield, the gaps started filling themselves in from the night before. What was you gonna say? <laughs> I was gonna say, what the fuck did I get up to last night exactly? Aside from jumping on the military van and almost getting shot in Western Sahara. Being Western world acclimatised and a little drunk, I had seen a Hummer driving up and down on the border the night before and thought it to be a queue jumper trying to steal our place in line. Thinking I'd play with them a little, I'd run up and leapt on the back only for the Hummer to screech to a halt. I had just ambushed Moroccan troops during their midnight border patrol and found myself with five of them pointing their guns at me. Rescue came in the form of Tom, who ran up, pulled me down, and apologized profusely in French. What else did I get up to? You don't even remember. Uh, you can't even tell me. <laughs> All of this happened. It's like, Claire, go away. When go I was out away. looking for firewood, I managed oh, to find someone's firewood. blanket. As it turns out, the vodka mission had been in vain anyway, since we'd overlooked a forgotten case of beer in the boot, which Mauritanian customs promptly found. On quizzing us in French and getting as his only reply our confused and brain-dead faces, the officer seemed to give up. He let us keep the beer, we got our roadside scramble, and emerged out the other side into Mauritania. Hey, we made it through! We just met our local contact, Irumu, who was supposed to organize us a military escort with a machine gun for travel onto Nwakshot. Travel advice was that due to Al-Qaeda activity, Mauritania was unsafe and that within the last 12 months, foreigners had been ambushed on the road we were driving and kidnapped for months. We were told that if only Irumu turned up, it was because the military had been called away to a small war, but that Irumu would have a handgun, which was better than no gun. Until this point, there was pressure to skip our plans to off-road in the Sahara and just drive on to Nwakshot. With no military escort, perhaps we could go off piste after all. Not all the cars wanted to do this, however, so it was time to talk it through and say our goodbyes if necessary. We could either continue on the tar, guided by Irimu with his handgun, and try to reach Nwakshot that same day. Or we could take our two-wheel drive across the Sahara Desert for the next 320 kilometers, along the Bank Dargan's 4x4 tracks, and see if we could make it far enough to rejoin the tar a couple of days later. Meanwhile, we were parked up and discussing options while Tom from the Asusu was chasing after Mauritania's iron ore train. The Asusu wanted to off-road, as did we, and the Renault. 
We had also just met a Jeep Cherokee at the border who also planned to off-road and had a GPS. All the other cars decided to shoot straight for Nwakshot. So with that, we said our goodbyes. We were now two four by fours and two two wheel drives. We had a couple of shovels, a few carpets to use as sand ladders in case we got stuck, a single GPS and a whole lot of desert waiting ahead of us. Our challenges for the day had only just begun. We're off-roading. Only. We're waiting on a two by two. Rather. <laughs> a four by four. Whee! But it's alright. We got stuck Whee! twice so far. Yep. But we're grand. Things had gone well so far as the ground was mostly firm. We were trying to cut our own way inland to join the official park tracks once we found the coast. But it wasn't long before we'd hit some snags, including an ancient riverbed with very soft sand that got us digging and pushing both of the two wheel drives for quite some time. We'd diligently stopped to reduce tire pressure and then hit rockier patches of desert, requiring our first puncture repairs. The day quickly wore on and we were beginning to owe everyone a whole lot of beer. But we were also having a whole lot of fun. No, no, no. Nice. What do you need rose for? You... As the sun dropped low, the dunes were coming into view and we started to plan a camp out on one as the night fell. So it's gonna make that noise a lot now. Why is that noise glad? You want to explain? <laughs> well, I kind of tore open the covering of the exhaust. Sort of driving really hardcore over a rock. Um, I'm now driving with a cup of tea over to a sand dune so that we can camp. Uh, we've also we've had three punctures. <laughs> three punctures on one wheel. Nice work, Claire. Good driving. <laughs> That's Duncan on the roof. Or firewood. Yeah, I'm gonna find some nice dunes to sleep on. Whoa! That cup of tea <laughs> just went all over the place. Off road, man. Yeah, we got stuck in the sand three times already. And it's uh, ah! still morning. Still morning. Still morning. Check out those sand dunes. Have, uh, yeah, we fixed our third puncture last night. Nice. Just to wake up this morning and realize the uh -huh. other tire was completely like bald. cracked. Yeah, it was yeah. bald. Not we need. So we managed to get out the spare, got that on, got point to repairs on the other tire, and hopefully we'll make it to. Fuck. The stuck shit. Although we'd repaired a number of punctures, we'd fixed most without taking the wheels off. This was because it had taken until we were deep in the Sahara to discover we had locking wheel nuts that we didn't have a key for. Thanks eBay. One puncture was so bad it slashed open a tire completely. In a moment of desperation, we hammered the Jeep's similar shaped key onto the offending wheel and got it off, but broke the key in the process. We now had no more get out of jail free cards when it came to punctures. But we did have plenty of reminders we were still mortal in the form of burnt out wreck and expired mammals that had gone before us. <laughs> Found a skeleton of a camel. Where is he? <laughs> we got a bit. He's so good. It's very flat now. Yep. Out of bushes. Oh. Yay! Woo! Nice and flat. <laughs> so nice. <laughs> 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 so I around with skinny. But the easy stuff wouldn't last and it wouldn't be long before we found ourselves at the edge of a plateau that we had no choice but to get down from somehow. But get down, we miraculously did. A hell of a lot of pushing later. Right, we've been uh, fixing two more punctures. Yep. <laughs> and... Uh, Drone driven down a massive sand dune. Massive sand dune, couldn't film it, but we got towed in the end downhill. Uh, went alright. Now we're just speeding across these bits because oh, they're all of a sudden... Go. Oh shit. Ready? Ready, ready. ready. Speed! Ah! <laughs> we had finally hit the official park tracks. 
We made it. I think. Maybe. We think it could be a mirage. Line. <laughs> we do believe. We had now been off-roading across the Sahara for two full days and were heading for a campsite halfway through the park at Iwik. It's sort of a mud, sand, slash, I don't know, we're surfing, yeah. We could be old seabull. And yeah, we're surfing it. Go with it. One more mile. One more mile. That's a bit unfortunate. One that was the nice. That was marked, or the national park? Because we made it oh, no, here. No, yeah, the expensive campsite was over there. And the sea is right there. And you can go on the beach. Actual sea. Which is cool. Got one mile to go. And we're off. Duncan's up on the roof, look. We reached camp before sunset, thinking the worst was now done. Okay. Hello. Very good. I'm just my teeth. I can't drop my tooth for a mouthpiece. <laughs> <laughs> the four-wheel drives were about to tell us that they wanted to drive more challenging roads out, taking the GPS with them. Our only option was to hire local guide Sidi, who'd show us the track to Nwakshot. Sidi spoke Arabic and French, we did not, but he also spoke bad Spanish, as did I. This would have to do, and we resume our drive next episode. Hi, present day Claire here. New episodes will be uploaded every Sunday, so hit subscribe if you'd like to be notified when it's time to watch. Thanks and see you next time.